uh, Jay Harwood through the special edition of Amazing Mets. I love my podcast with two prominent members of the 2000 National League Championship team, my captain, Glendon Rush. Guys, I know you guys can be back August 27th for the Old Timers Day game. How many innings are each you could, could be able to throw? Let's start with you, Mike, because you're the oldest. Well, um, I'm I'm hoping to just be able to walk on the field without getting injured. So I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be a tough call for me. Well, well, we, we, you know, we, we we have a lot of pitches. Glenn, you ready to throw? I'm ready if you guys need me. Yeah, I said I, I said I'd be uh, able to go out there and hopefully give a an out or two or pipe a couple down the middle and not get anybody out. Who knows? <laughs> no, it, it, it should be fun. We're hoping to go, you know, two or three days, depending on what the time thing. Did you guys pitch together a couple of years ago at a, a World Series or something in Kentucky? I remember it wasn't too long ago. Was my, is my memory going bad? My no, books. we were we were um, we were playing um, I guess like semi pro teams and stuff like that. Some of the uh, guys had Johnny Damon, Rush. Um, we had some some pretty good guys there. I, I was I was the pitching coach, so I got to make the make the call. So one of my greatest calls was bringing Glennon in because he just shut him down with that change. <laughs> <laughs> he told me later that was his fastball, but I was like, that was a <laughs> yeah, that you was, was a guy. When was the last time you guys were on the mound? That was probably I've I've done it a couple times since. I've got a local group of guys in, in Louisville that, that play in a men's league and they sneak me out there every once in a while. But man, it, I tell you what, it it hurts worse every year that I get older and I do it. And uh after I'm finished, I, I don't know if I really get that much out of it. I, I My body hurts worse than it is uh, the enjoyment of being back on the field. But I do miss it. I miss the competition. How about you, Mike? When was the last time you threw? Uh, probably um, 11 years ago on the mound. Um, but I found out that I, I'm pretty deadly in machine pitch. I've, I've been able to locate pretty well in that so far. <laughs> Let's talk a little 2000 uh, baseball. Uh, Mets win 94 games. Uh, win seven of nine uh, playoff games before the World Series, and we lose in five in five games. I think by a total of five runs to a pretty good Yankee team. Does it bother you? Do you think your guy, the team, wasn't appreciated as much because we lost to the Yankees that year, guys? Either one who wants to start. Uh, you know, I, mean, I, I uh, yeah, you know, here's the thing, like. As great as the Subway Series was for New York, uh, I felt like if we would have played another team, I think we'd have probably been it'd probably been a little different if we played someone on the West Coast or something like that. I think we could have separated them, you know. But uh, it's just it's it's tough, you know. When you're you know the Yankees have had so much success, and you know we were kind of new, a lot of you know, different younger guys and stuff like that. So I um, I felt that uh, yeah, I, a little underappreciated, but. I mean, honestly, we made it to the World Series, and we had a close-knit team, and uh, I think we still love each other, and every time we see each other, it's like, you know, it's like old times, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. How about you, Glennon? I, you know, I always think about it. I can't imagine, and I'm sure Michael think the same thing, if, if you take our team, you know, now 22 years later and put them in this day and age with social media and Twitter and Instagram and TikTok and everything else and all the characters we had, I think it would I think we would be uh, a, a, an extremely popular team to follow, but it was a different time then, you know, it was, it was uh, media was different. Social media was non-existent. Um, but yeah, I, I, sometimes I feel like we were a little bit underappreciated, but those Yankees teams were so good. I mean, they went to the world series, you know, one, four out of five, they went four years in a row and lost it, you know, after going for their fourth one in oh one, but um it, it was a. I, I thought it was a great series, even though we we uh, only ended up winning one game. And but that, like you said, Jay, they were all close. We have five runs in four games. It's tough to uh, tough to uh, look at and, and think that we weren't in the in those games and competing. I mean, we were inviting Timo Perez back, and we're gonna have a message on the board: Run, Timo, run. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Uh -oh. No, that was yeah. called. Cool. Well, yeah, I know, you know, some of those things stick out, but yes. you know, I mean, we had every. You always have chances, and you know, you, everybody wishes they would have did a few things different. I wish I wouldn't have gave up a hit to Tino Martinez in the first inning to get down two nothing. You know, there's all kinds of things we'd like to take back, but you know, in the heat of the moment when the game's going and the speed of the game's going, you know, you're just out there competing and having fun. And Timo's a big reason why we got where we were. So 
Um, and it happens. Mike, you were with the Mets for one year, but you know, great year, 15 to 10, MVP in the league championship series, no runs in 16 innings. What was it like the last game against the Cardinals? Seven a complete game, over 50,000, 55,000 people at Chase Stadium. Yeah, I just, I just remember being just so locked in. Like, I just felt like, I mean, we were ending that series, uh, that game. Um, it was just uh, one of those things. I always felt pretty, pretty comfortable pitching against the Cardinals since my time with uh, the Astros. I've had some you know, pretty good success against them. So uh, I felt my stuff matched up well against them in that series. And, uh, you know, it was it was exciting. I was, you know, still the thrill of my lifetime, uh, you know, professionally, sports-wise, being on that mound, uh, clinching uh, the, the series. Uh, is something that I'll never forget. And, I mean, sometimes, I, you know, I find myself just daydreaming about it still. Glenn, did you, if I remember, you were 11-11 that year, and you still, you pitched, in, his, in relief in the series, a couple of games, you had a 2.2 ERA, but a little frustrating. You know, we had Bobby Jones, Al, uh, Rick Reed, and Mike, and you weren't able, you know, we're really in the bullpen for most of the postseason. Was that a little frustrating for you, or, you know, how, how do you look back upon that time? It actually wasn't. I, um, you know, when Bobby brought me in and, and told me when, when we were getting ready to start the playoffs that he felt I was going to be more valuable because he could use me more often out of the pen, especially in, in the middle of some of those games. Uh, I was excited about it. You know, I only got in one game in the, in the first series, but got pitched in a couple important games in, in the NLCS and actually got a win in yeah. one of the games. And then, and then I ended up pitching in three out of the five games in the world series. So it was pretty amazing. Look, Mike, you know, Mike, you're like the, even though you were when one season was, you're like the ever very baddie, the gift that keeps giving when you went to Colorado, we got a compensation pick and we drafted David Wright. So Met fans are still indebted to you. I, you know, I think so. I think I need to be shown a little bit of appreciation, right? I mean, I, I mean, I gave you the captain, right? So, yeah. and he, what a great player, you know, ter terrible the way his uh, career had to end, you know, short, but man, just, he played the game right. Uh, yeah, I think that worked out pretty well for, uh, for the Mets. Yeah. Glenn, what was it like for you pitching in the Sierras at Yankee Stadium? Uh, it was uh, unbelievable. I was, you know, nervous, obviously, and you pitch in the first World Series game. But it, as, as we've all talked about before, and I know Mike and I have talked about it, that that first game that I came in in the in extra innings was one of the most special appearances that I've ever had in my career. But I wish it never happened. You know, I wish <laughs> I wish we closed <laughs> that game out in the ninth. Um, but it was it was awesome, and and I look back with so many great memories, and it's cool now that my boys are getting older. They they ask about that stuff, so it's it's great. I don't know if you guys know the list from the two thousand team. We have Turk, Franco, Cook, Zeal, Piazza, Robin, Fonzi, and Bobby V. Be back. Be a pitcher. What was it like to play back in that infield? Supposedly the greatest infield in history, MLB. You're Robin at third base, Ray at short. Uh, Fonzie at second, John Olerud at first base. As pitchers, what did it mean to you to have that infield in back here? Yeah, um, well, we had we had Zeal at first base that, at that time. That's right, yeah, that's right. Uh, but um, but I think Glenn and I are, are similar pitchers in the fact that we rely on our defense. So um, you know we're gonna we're gonna put the, get them to put the ball in play, hopefully in our counts, and you know what we want them to do with the ball, but. Um, yeah, I mean, Robin made it look so easy. You know, Zeal, you know, came in, and I, I remember uh, Keith Hernandez been out there teaching him some first base, trying to, you know, get him acclimated to it. I thought he handled it well. And then up the middle, we're just as talented as could be. So um, I really, you know, relied heavily on those guys because, you know, my ball, the balls, like I said, I don't strike a ton of guys out. So the ball's getting put in play a lot. So it is super important for me to have a, a solid infield like we had. Yeah, but how about you, Glennon? My favorite part of that infield was watching Robin try and walk like me and act like me after a strikeout at third base and when he <laughs> gets the ball back to me. <laughs> Hopefully he can do it at the uh, old timers game. That would be because that, that was one of my favorite things is watching him make fun of me. Do you remember when uh, I may, maybe had my years where when he imitated Piazza at Yankee Stadium in a rain delay when he slid across the field in mud and me, Robin had such a great sense of humor and uh, He's a great teammate. Will you remember it? Will, 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 when the Puerto Yankee Stadium, he ran around the faces and slid like Mike, got dressed up like Mike. Oh, that was the best. Yeah, you can. I think when uh, people send me that video every year, when when it's on the anniversary, it starts circulating again, and you can see me on the bent or on the leaning on the rail, and I'm like got this huge 
smile on my face because I'm laughing so hard. But yeah, undercover, sneaky, super funny and awesome guy Robin is. And and our whole crew, actually, I mean, man, Hampy will tell you how many all those dinners and, and flights and everything that we had, man, there were some good laughs. What do you remember, Mike? Yeah, just the same thing. Um, I mean, just big groups going to lunches, big groups on the back of the plane talking baseball. Like, I think a lot of that gets missed now with all the videos and all the, the game, all the games they can play at anything. You know, you can play video games anywhere at any time. Like, we, we talked baseball. We spent a lot of time with each other, you know, just, you know, talking about, I remember Al Lider was huge. And in my development, because the first month and a half, I mean, I was you know really struggling, but like, he's like, hey, what's your game plan? What's your game? What you going to do? I mean, this really made me think before I just kind of relied on being athletic and, you know, being able to kind of do what I do. But he really was one of the ones who really started to get me to get more involved in my game prep and stuff like that. So not only was it a great year, but it was it was great for my career as well. Yeah, one guy I forgot, he took about the team, you know, Mike was a quote superstar, but he had guys like Jay Payton and Timo and Betty Art Bionic contributing. So really was, you know, Bobby to me did a great job of using the entire roster and getting everybody involved in the game. You guys agree? Oh yeah. We, I mean, we were top to bottom. We, we were, uh, you know, guys coming off the bench with super Joe and, and Lenny Harrison and, and, uh, Matt Franco, Todd Pratt. I mean, the whole, the whole crew we had, um, everyone contributed and let's not forget about, you know, Derek Bell was basically an all-star of the first half and unfortunately he got hurt, but Timo filled in for him. But yeah, I mean that whole, and, and then our whole bullpen was awesome and, and could be counted on every single day. I mean, you guys you know, were pitching, what, you, do you follow the Mets at all currently with the pitching staff with, you know, Scherzer and DeGrom, Carrasco, uh, you know, Walker, you know, do you guys follow closely? Yeah, I, I enjoy, I enjoy watching staffs like this pitch. I mean, um, there's so much, you know, there's so many dynamic pitchers and so many great arms and stuff like that, but, um, you know, especially with DeGrom and, and Scherzer, I mean, guys that have dynamic stuff that understand how to pitch, you know, have a game plan and able to execute game plans. There's a lot of young kids that are coming up and they can throw it as hard as you, you want to throw. And, uh, but you know, these guys, I mean, they put it all together. Um, it's super impressive to watch. And, you know, with those two guys on top, you know, Tywin Walker, you know, he was with Seattle when I was there when I coached and, and he can shut anybody down at any given time, you know, once his confidence levels up, he's, he can go out and just dominate a game. So, I mean, they're deep. It's uh, it's fun to watch. Like I said, they got a team that are poised to do well in the postseason because nobody wants to match up against these guys when they're helping. Yeah. I think I had Chris Bassett too, of course. Yeah. He had a great game last week. One hit or, you know, one run, no, not, not earned. Just, yeah, just these guys are, I think they're, they're kind of hitting the stride like we hit, you know, when we just, our confidence are high and that, that second half of the season, I mean, we just started believing ourselves and started saying, hey, we're going to do this. Like, we got a great team. We can compete with anybody. And, you know, that big game, we came back against the Braves. I mean, it's just like, let's go, guys. That was, that was we, were, we were behind eight to one. We got 10 runs in the bottom of the eighth inning. You know. Yeah. Good. Good. Teddy, I know you follow closely too, right? Yeah, I watch all the time. My, my kids, it's great. You know, my boys are uh, fr- starting freshman year in college and, freshman year in high school and and they follow and they watch um the Mets they watch all the different you know teams in the league but they definitely follow the Mets everyone loves Edwin Diaz and his trumpets so yeah the, but, you know even, even yesterday um I heard Al Leiter on MLB Network and he was saying man if if you know Scherzer and DeGrom are throwing the ball the way they are now that, that, that they're going to be a World Series team and and yeah, who's going to beat those guys? You know, if you see those guys, four guys in a, or sorry, four games in a seven game series, they're going to be tough. What does it mean to you guys, you know, whether you play or not play any material to come back and you guys get a big hand, big part of Mets history? Your kids are older now. What is it going to mean to your families to see you you get the applause and see, well, dad did do something during his career? What, what does that mean to you, fellas? I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to be waiting to see which, where it goes, you know. I've got some booze here, some applause here. You know, I, I always enjoy going back to New York because, like like I said, it was the best, you know, year of my career. Um, but uh, and then to, to pitch in New York and be able to, to do well and, 
So, I mean, I have fond memories of New York. I had a lot of people, you know, appreciate what I did for that year and, you know, were, were mad when I left, which is understandable. I, I'm fine with that. Um, at least they're passionate enough to, to, to care. And uh, so I'm looking forward to it. And uh, my, my, my older boys are, are, are very aware, you know, they're 26 and 22, but my, my younger ones, my daughter's nine and my son's seven, they're still kind of trying to figure this thing out. Like, you know, what, what did you do? They, you know, cause they've never really been around a clubhouse or things like that since I, uh, when I was playing like the, the older boys. How about you, Glenn? Same. I mean, I'm, I'm very excited to come back. Uh, my, my youngest son's going to, going to come with me. And so he's going to be there to see it. He was real little when I was finishing up my career and honestly being on the field and then back in the dugout with, all the different generations of the Mets guys for me is I grew up a huge uh, doc and Daryl, you know, they were my guys. I wore number 18 for because of Daryl strawberry all the way through high school and all the way through the minor leagues. So being back at the, at the, you know, with those guys and David Wright and all our guys from 2000 and it's going to be really cool. I'm excited. What do you have? What do you, how do you think about that, Mike? What's that? Who, do you is there anybody you're looking to see, especially when you go back, or you know any one teammate you haven't seen in a while? I'm looking forward to see you, Jay. I you're got, one, I, you're, you're Mike, why I'm coming, Mike. I haven't gotten any prettier in the years, Mike. So I'm <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah, honestly, you know the same guys we played with. Like, I mean, you know, I don't know all the guys that are uh, are coming. I haven't seen a list or anything like that. But um, once I get there, I'm just in the nostalgia of it all, and like it's a brotherhood. You know, it always is, regardless. You know, you play a day or, or, you know, 50 years. I mean, it's a brotherhood. So it, it's always good to catch up with all the guys and see what they've been up to. And and uh, just, it, it's just fun to be back at the ball field. Mike, I, got you. I see the Louis, Louisville Slugger thing in your back. I want to yeah. guys are pretty good hitting pictures. What do you feel about no more pictures don't hit anymore? What are you feeling about that, guys? Oh, man, I, I, I don't know if I could handle it. I'd have to maybe try to come back as a position player. I, I don't know. I, I always felt like I tried to play the game like it was Little League. I always trying to just extend my Little League career every year. You know, I mean, if I'm playing, I wanted to hit, I wanted to run bases. I wanted to always compete. But uh, I understand it to, to an extent where, you know, you can probably maybe save some careers, you know, with it. I probably would have extended mine a little bit because I was pretty violent on my body. But uh, personally, I, I, I wish they would uh, keep it as it is. Um, I guess I got the most silver sluggers of all time. So I guess there's one good thing about, uh, how many uh, have Mike five. That's pretty good. Yeah. So I guess, uh, I guess there's that unless they, they bring it back. Um, then again, what Otani is doing is, is pretty incredible. I, I, I never thought I knew he'd be successful. I never thought to that extent, like to be able to compete on both sides of the ball like that is, is amazing. So uh, Glenn, there's still some pitchers that can hit. <laughs> Glenn, you were a pretty good hitter, right? Yeah, I got better as my career went on. Mike and the guys got me going. Um, yeah, no, I loved it. Loved the National League game. I missed it already, um, not having it this year. And, and um, you know, I, I guarantee if you go around and ask all the managers in the National League, they miss it too. Speaking of managers, let me start easy. What was it like to play for Bobby V? You know, he's uh, – you know, I remember the game against Toronto in mid-year. Gets thrown out of the game, puts a mustache on and gets fined for, uh, you know, putting a mustache on. What kind of a manager was he to play for? Well, for, for me, I thought it was fantastic. Um, you know, from the from the moment I came over, um, you know, he let me know that, you know, I was going to get the ball every day. He uh, he was behind me when I was struggling early. And, uh, you know, as, as the season went on, I mean, he always was in my corner, always on my side. I had a, I had a great experience with Bobby. I thought he did a great job. Um, handling the, the uh, handling New York in itself and handling, uh, you know, the different uh, players we had from all walks of life. I mean, I thought he did a great job of meshing those two. And he was stern in, when he needed to be, but uh, he was always there having a good time, I felt, too. You, you know, we all want to win, but um, I always enjoyed my time with Bobby. What, what say you, Glenn? Same. I, I – um you know, considered Bobby to be a huge mentor for me. He helped me, gave me an opportunity there. I was still pretty, pretty young, only a couple of years in the big leagues when I, when I got traded over to the Mets and, and uh, you know, I earned a spot and he gave me that opportunity to earn it and, and was behind me the whole way. I mean, gosh, helped me find a place to live up in Connecticut. Cause I didn't know where to go when I got to New York. So, I mean, he's, 
he was instrumental in helping me along in my career and, and definitely, uh, a huge part of it. And I love, you know, that we still have a relationship to this day and it'll be great to see him. And, and I look forward to it. Guys, you know, what? one of the nice things about this game is I don't think you guys are aware, you know, John Stearns has been battling some kind of some illnesses in Colorado and he's going to be with us at the game. And, and it's going to be, you know, and John was a coach on that team and it's going to be good to see the bad dude again. What do you guys remember about John? Oh man, he was, he reminded me a lot of my dad, just a fiery, ready to go at the drop of a hat. Like, oh man, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed everything he had to say. I enjoyed everything he's about. Like, I, I like bad dudes. I like dudes that are like a real man like he, he was. And like, there was no fooling around. You knew exactly what he meant when he said it. But no, I, I enjoyed John. I, I look forward to seeing him as well. Yeah, it's going to be awesome to see him. He's a, ga he's a gamer, man. I mean, he, like, like camp you saying he you felt like he wanted to get on the field with us when he was coaching so it was mm -hmm. awesome it'd be great to see him you coach your kids for a while when he got out right Did, baseball yeah yeah I'm, i mean i coach uh i coach my uh um, my now 22 year old um he just graduated uh this year actually from um, asu with a degree in uh, sports business and a minor in philosophy so he both my older boys are graduated and, and, and out. So that's a, that's a good thing. But uh, now I'm coaching my little guys. Um, my my seven-year-old team last year was dominant, undefeated. They were so fun. Just, uh, and the care, I mean, honestly, I'm enjoying it so much because they're, these kids have so much personality and they're so different. And it's like, man, I, I kind of see a lot of similarities in my dad coaching me when I was there. I try to tone it down a little bit but everybody's like man how do you yell at my kid but like it doesn't really seem like you're yelling at him i'm like i don't know but just i guess a lot of years of practice i guess <laughs> mike do they know you were for a major leaguer the, the kids uh, that's seven year old do they know who you are for you know? there'll be a few of them that kind of know and then as the season would progress depending on the team the kids i had from the year previous they'll kind of be like hold on a second and they'll see a baseball card or something like that like you play like yeah like it's hard for them to kind of see this old man out there coaching them like you play against these young kids but uh but yeah sometimes they'll they'll figure it out there's some kids that are are really into stats and all that kind of stuff already but uh a lot of them just play as many sports as possible which i uh, i enjoy glad i don't know if you want to talk about it could you briefly touch on the project you're involved in is now not a good time or yeah no i'd love to talk about it um we are uh in production on a documentary uh, about the 20 strikeout games in major league baseball. Um, I'm working with, uh, Russell Groves is our producer. He just finished the Nolan Ryan project. A lot of you may have seen, uh, facing Nolan that's out there now. And I'm working alongside Reed Ryan, Nolan's son and Ryan Dempster. And, uh, so we've got Kerry Wood, Randy Johnson, uh, your, your Mets own Max Scherzer and, uh, and, um, who am I missing? Oh, Roger Clemens, of course. Uh, so all, all four of the guys are involved in the project and we're in production on it now. And uh, hopefully it'll be spring or summer of next year. It will be released so everybody can see it. Awesome. Glenn, that sounds great. Glenn, do you have a part like for an aging PR guy in the movie at all? <laughs> oh, that's easy. We can get you in there for sure, Jay. Thanks, I appreciate it. Hey, after your, hey, after your uh, Oscar award-winning performance in, uh, in the uh, Mets documentary, I don't see how we can turn you down. I, you know, some of my former teammates at 86 did me wrong. You know, now I'm remembered <laughs> by uh, people standing outside the door. I don't want to get into that right now, but that's, that's my legacy. That's my legacy. <laughs> Guys, I can't wait for August 27th. We have 62 Mets, 69 Mets, 2,000 Mets. Uh, the great Bartolo Colon is coming back. Uh, oh, my God. We, you know, we have a lot of good guys coming. We have four managers, Joe Torrey, Bobby V., uh, Terry Collins and Willie Randolph. And it would be, be a great celebration of Mets baseball. So look forward to seeing you guys and appreciate your time, guys. A lot of good memories today. Lots of good memories. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you too, Glenn. Yeah, yeah you, you too, guys. We can't wait, Jay. It's going to be special. Okay. Special. And don't forget, regards to Kevin for me, please. <laughs> All right. Sounds All right, good. See you, boys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. DJ. All right, guys. Thanks.